determine the unstretched length of spring AC, if a force P equals 80 pounds causes the angle theta equals 60 for equilibrium. Cord AB is 2 feet long and K is 50 pounds per foot. Once you've read the problem, the next thing to do is to draw a free body diagram. First thing in drawing a free body diagram is deciding what you're drawing the free body diagram of. In this case, our point of interest is point A. If we have a force P coming down from A, we have a force spring force going from A to C, and we have a tension going from A to B. The other thing, of course, we need for these is angles. This angle is theta, and this angle we don't know, but we can call it phi for the moment. Once you've drawn a free body diagram for the forces, we also need to capture the geometry of the situation in some fashion. So here we have our triangle that looks like this. This is 60 degrees. This is 4 feet. And we don't, we're given that this is 2 feet. We don't know the other two angles. There are a wide variety of ways of showing that what the angles are. For the purposes of this problem, we're going to use the law of cosines and the law of sines. This distance, AC, is the new length of our spring. Since we know the angle opposite it, we can use the law of cosines to show that the new length of the spring is the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 2 times 4 times the cosine of the angle in between 2 and 4, or 60. This is the square root of 12. That's the new length of our spring. We don't know what the old length of our spring is. We, that's what we're looking for. We can use the law of sines to find the other angles in our triangle. Specifically, the square root of 12 over sine of its angle, 60, has to be the same as 2 over, for example, this angle, phi, sine phi. If you solve that for phi, you show that phi is 30 degrees. So in fact, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. There are other ways of showing that that is true, but we're going to work with the way we used for the moment. Now we know, in our free body diagram, all of the angles to be able to write our forces in Cartesian form. P is 80 pounds in the negative J direction, down. AB is whatever its magnitude is, we don't know that, times cosine of theta, or third cosine of 60 in the negative i direction, and AB sine theta up j. Our other force is FS. That's its magnitude times the cosine of phi in the i direction, and its magnitude times the sine of phi in this j direction. The magnitude of the spring force is the spring coefficient, k, times the change in length of the spring. Our spring coefficient is 50 pounds per foot, and the spring change in length is whatever it started as minus whatever it ended up as, or the other way around. Since AB started at 2 feet, we don't know exactly how big the spring started. We do know that it probably stretched. How do we know that? Because if you pull on this system with a non-zero P, you're going to stretch that spring. So our change in length is whatever we have now, we found that here, the new length of the spring, minus whatever it started out as, and that's what we're looking for. We can plug this into our equation for the force of the spring. I simplified these using a calculator, remembering that theta is 60 and phi is 30, and write the equations of equilibrium. Specifically, we want to find the sum of the forces in x equals 0 and the sum of the forces in y equals 0. We do that by adding the i's and adding the j's. So, if we add all, all of the i's, we have minus 1 half times ab plus the square root of 3 over 2 
times 50 times the square root of 12 minus L naught. P does not have an I term, so this is equal to zero. The sum of the forces in the y direction gives us the square root of 3 over 2 AB plus 1 half 50 square root of 12 minus L naught minus 80 equals zero. This is two equations and two unknowns and we can solve. Let's solve this first equation for AB and substitute it into the second equation. So LO would be 2.66 feet.